loss. How many pounds a week is a realistic healthy weight loss goal? One to, One to two. Half a pound to two pounds. Two pounds for a big person. For not a big person, one pound a week. Half a pound to one pound. One pound is just a good number to think about. Now, why do they claim you can lose more? Because nobody's going to get excited about, oh, I get to lose four pounds this month. <laughs> we want to lose weight fast. They're a business. They're going to get customers. They're going to get customers <laughs> you something that you want to hear. Oh, I can get rid of it all in two months. Not six months, two months. Sign me up. Um, they don't treat the real cause of why you're overweight. If you don't get to the real cause of why you put on the weight, you probably won't solve the weight problem. You should be putting on a temporary fix. They're almost, and therefore, they're almost never, never successful at long-term <coughs> weight loss. Actually, there's some other reasons as well. Okay, now, here's what the diet books. By the way, there's more things about fad diets in the course, hand, in the handouts in the course packet. There's a longer version of describing fad diets, so be sure to look at the handouts on this topic of diets and weight. Okay, here's what the diet books don't tell you. When you severely restrict your calories, and almost every fad diet has you severely restricting your calories. Why? Because you're not going to come close to meeting those unbelievable weight loss goals unless you practically starve yourself. You can't lose four or five pounds a week unless you are practically starving yourself. And they're from making that promise. They want you to be successful full so that you will think the diet is good and it works. And if you see the weight coming off, then you're going to assume, ah, it works. So, when, but when you severely restrict your calories, and actually this act begins as soon as you cut your caloric intake by 20% of energy balance. So if you're in energy balance at 2,000 calories, 2,000 in, 2,000 out, you're maintaining your weight. Any diet that is below 1,600, 20% of 2,000 is 400 calories. 4,000 calories subtracted from 2,000 is 1,600. You go below 1,600, you're going to see these changes take place. When the lower you get, the more dramatic these changes are. First thing that happens, and this is within um, 48 hours, is you have double the LPL. Remember that? Lipoprotein lipase. What's going to be the consequence of having twice as much LPL enzyme sitting around? You got more hands grabbing at that fat. Like magnets. Come on in, come on in. More fat's going to be going into those fat cells. Is that what you want when you're losing weight? Uh-uh. Exactly the opposite. At the same time, your HSL is cut in half. Half. Remember, these are enzymes that are reducible. You have double the LPL and half the HSL. Wow. Wow. Your fat cells are immediately setting themselves up for grabbing fat and holding onto it more tightly. This is the exact opposite of what the dieter wants to help. And it's part of why keeping the weight off becomes so challenging. Uh, your basal metabolic rate goes down by 8 to 22 percent. And that's within 24 to 48 hours of going on a diet. What's the consequence of your BMR going down? Your output. Energy out goes down. BMR is the biggest component of energy out. Energy in equals energy out. Energy out, basal metabolic rate is about two-thirds of it. If it goes down by 8 to 22 percent, your energy out's going down quite a bit. So you're no longer at energy balance at 2,000 calories. If you start, let's say, a 1,000-calorie diet and energy balance 2,000, you think you have a 1,000-calorie deficit every day? Uh-uh. Right off the bat, your energy out is going down. You also lose lean muscle mass when you go on a, on a low calorie diet. And if you go on a low carb diet, you lose more muscle mass. You know what the low carb diet books don't tell you is some of the weight you lose is muscle. You're losing muscle to, in order to get protein to convert amino acids to glucose. Because even if you're not on a low carb diet, if you're eating 1,000 calories, you're not eating enough carbs. 
And if your BMR goes, I mean, if your muscle mass goes down, then your basal metabolic rate goes down, and therefore you have another cut on energy out. Energy out is shrinking. You also have a decrease in thermic effect of food. If you cut your calories in half, thermic effect of food is cut in half. You're cutting another chunk away of energy out. You also sadly have a decrease in leptin and an increase in ghrelin, and that can make you feel more hungry. And the zinger, in my opinion, is you feel deprived. Okay, you go on a diet, right away, you feel deprived. You can't eat what you want to eat. Your mindset goes into a state of, woe is me, I can't eat what I love. You feel deprived, and depriving and deprivation in some people, not everybody, leads to binging. Binging is not just overeating, it's uncontrollable overeating. You feel like you can't stop. And if you start a diet, you're an energy out balance of 2,000 calories, now you're eating 1,000 calories. You do really well for a week or two, and then a weekend rolls around. You go to a party, you try not to eat very much in the day because you want to save up your calories for the party, but you're hungry, and you've been deprived for two weeks, and you're tired, and you're weak, because that's what diets do to you. So in a moment of temptation, you give in, what happens next? You're eating like there's no tomorrow. That's what dieting does to people. But what's going to happen? You're going to store energy like you've never seen your body store energy. You're going to gain back the weight you lost in another pound or two. Especially if you eat a lot the rest of the weekend. Because if you blow it Friday night, you go back on the diet Saturday morning. No. You said I blew it Friday night. I'm 